Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight and this video is about the energies of the new moon that's coming next week. Now I'm a galactic and intuitive astrologer so in these videos I try and pull together some of the traditional astrology themes and energies that we're working with and then I bring in the fixed stars, cosmic and galactic energies along with some numerology and also just some sort of insight um, that sometimes comes through intuitively. So I hope you enjoy what I've got to share. Now, you know, I know we say this every time, but it is an exciting lunation. So the new moon is a time, it's the beginning of the lunar cycle. It's when the sun and the moon reach the same degree um, exactly to the minute of the sign that they are both in. And it is really a time for a new um, a new seed to be sown, a new intention to be set, you know, something new to manifest. So it is very much about um, new starts and something fresh coming through. And obviously we always look at the sign that the new moon is in to sort of see what the energies are doing, what energy we're working with. And then we look at what else is going on in the chart. So from the outset, you know, this, I said it's an exciting new moon um, and it is for a number of reasons. But, you know, the first thing to really point out is the fact that it is happening on the 6th of June. So that is 6-6. Six, six. Now, whenever there is a repeating number, whether it's in a chart or whether through a date, it's always a more powerful day. And the 6-6 six, six is known as the 6-6 six, six portal. So the number six is a number that we associate with the divine feminine. It's very compassionate, um, all about harmony, about balance, um, about having deep understanding, high levels of self-love, of self-care. Very healing, very peaceful, very loving, and also linked to the mother energy. So sort of protector, um, nurturer, nourisher, um, guiding energy, but very soft, very gentle, sort of very inviting change, inviting sort of compassion, in, inviting us to come into the heart space. So we have this beautiful energy already through the date that we're working with. Um, but the new moon itself is at 16 degrees, 17 minutes of Gemini. It's taking place at 1.37 p.m. in the UK. So obviously, you know, check where that's going to be depending where you are in the world. And, you know, we're working with a strong Gemini energy because we have Jupiter has recently moved into Gemini. I did a video about that. Um, so check that out if you've not watched it. We have Sedna recently moved into Gemini. Then the Sun, the Moon, the Venus are all there. And Venus happens to be at the same degree point as the Sun and the Moon. So I will talk about that in a minute. But that is exceptional in itself. And we also have Mercury. So there is a lot of Gemini energy. And yeah, I've talked about Gemini energy, you know, a lot in my recent video. Just to reiterate, you know, Gemini is the sign that we associate with the mind, with understanding, with learning, with education, communication, networking, connection. It's the sign that is um, about our sort of immediate, our immediate environment and um, our early years, our early learning. So school comes under that, our local neighborhood, um, our local community. It is very much linked to um, the voice, to speech, to the words we use and how powerful the words we use are. Um, it is linked to social media and the media and the stories and writing and singing. All of that sort of comes under the Gemini umbrella. And, you know, when we think about the energy itself, it's mutable air. So it is very um, fast, very swift. Um, really wants change, doesn't really like to sit still. Gemini is the ultimate multitasker, wants to do a million different things at once. This is really busy energy, always thinks the grass is greener. Um, you know, likes to have different projects on the go, fingers in lots of different pies and um, lots of different friends, different hobbies. Um, you know, 
Gemini is the because it's symbolized by the twins there is a sense of um you know having perhaps two sides to a Gemini so if you've got strong Gemini in your chart you might feel that you know maybe you've got two different lives in one or two different sides to your personality um certainly for me Gemini is in my at my mid heaven so I have two different jobs most of the time um, and I certainly had lots of different careers in my working life so you know the, the lot likes to have lots of different things going on now the downside of Gemini when it's strong is there can be too much going on it can be really difficult to find any stillness to find any peace and um, because you know it just wants to be active all the time so that can create overwhelm mental overwhelm and um, nervous sort of really high um, nervous energy can be a problem just because it can be really hard to settle so what we're going to be up against as all of this um, Gemini is active in the chart is this almost overwhelm barrage of information of facts coming through stories coming from left right centre field um, it's going to be quite difficult, my feeling is, and I, I'm, I can see it already playing out, to really know where to look, who to listen to, because everybody's got a different opinion, a different side. You know, Gemini often is about um, taking sides, so sort of pitching, you know, having one opinion that maybe um, is different from another's, but it is about sort of accepting that there are two sides to every story, that, you know, it is okay to have a different opinion from someone else. And that doesn't mean that you have to go to war or fight. You know, there is, it is about finding that common ground and that middle ground and also weaving through all those different threads, all those different strands and trying to make sense of what you are being presented with. So again, you know, that is um, that is quite a skill, especially in the climate that we live in, where there is just so much noise. If you're on social media, you know, if you are watching the news or wherever you're getting your information from, you know, with the, in the age that we live in, it is just, there's just so much. So it can be a real um, sort of skill to be able to navigate that without being overwhelmed and without being sort of sent off down one rabbit hole where you become really dogmatic and think, no, this is the truth and whatever anybody else says that differs in that or argues against it, they're wrong. You know, it's about being able to see different start sides of the story and understand that, you know, one person's perspective, although it may be different, isn't necessarily the right or the wrong way. So that is coming through very strongly. Um, you know, we have when we have strong Gemini, we often have to make choices and um, make decisions about things, which, again, is very um, telling in light of what is going on in our world. You know, in our country, we've got the election, snap election just been called. You know, we are going to be called to make a choice. You know, which decision is the best decision? I'm not even going to get into anything like that. But it's just interesting that, you know, as we work with this strong Gemini energy, that these sort of things are coming into our field. And obviously this works, you know, it's working in the collective at a national, international level. Level, you know so many different ways it's playing out but it is also playing out at a personal level at an individual level as well so you know it's about being able to just take the information that is coming through and being able to discern which bit is important for you and which bit is your truth and which bit do you align with now with Venus here at the same point at 16 degrees of Gemini, Venus is very much the planet of love. It's about value, it's self-worth, self-love, self-care. It's about how we relate to other people, relationships, and ultimately the relationship with ourselves comes forward very strongly here. So with the new moon in Gemini, with Venus sitting here as well, it is we are getting new information is coming through that is going to give us a much deeper understanding, perhaps on something that hasn't been clear before. But it's also going to give us a much um, deeper understanding and appreciation of our worth and our value and what is important in this world. Um, you know, and what is worth holding on to and perhaps what is worth letting go of at this time. Because, you know, whenever we have a new start, there always has to be something that falls away at the same time. So Venus in Gemini is also really um, bringing the head 
Gemini head and the heart of Venus together and asking them to work together in more harmony to try and come into that more center point where you're not being necessarily ruled by the heart completely but you're managing to bring or in contrast or not being ruled by the head and letting the mind rule the show it's about coming into that balance and finding that harmony in that midpoint and also with Venus being you know the planet of the feminine um, you know, it's about um, yeah, feeling, uh, choosing a softer way, a, um, a softer path where, you know, we don't have to fight so hard for everything, being more receptive, being able to receive. And again, you know, this information that's coming in, Venus is here to soften it for us and take the edge off and bring more compassion and more love into the balance into the picture for us but certainly you know venus has just met with the sun so she is on a new journey now so again you know this is a new journey of self-worth of self-belief new information coming through a new telling you telling yourself a new story about who you are and what is important to you at this time as you move forward. So really beautiful energy playing a really strong and very powerful part in this new moon. Now, when we look at the rest of the chart, again, I'm not going to go into all the different aspects, but the ones that stand out is the square with Saturn in Pisces, 18 degrees of Pisces to the Sun, Moon and Venus. And squares are always catalysts for growth, but they can create tension. And that's that's the whole role. You know, if things aren't in uncomfortable or a little bit tense, then you're you know, it's much easier to ignore it, basically. So sometimes, you know, the universe has to create a little bit of um, give in order to, you know, make you sit up and notice and take action, which is what this square is all about. So Saturn is about lessons. It's about mastery. It's about maturity. It's about um, having to do the work. And Saturn in Pisces is really asking us to take account of our more spiritual selves, perhaps even our higher self in this instance, because higher self, you know, being um, part of our consciousness, which is perhaps not always readily available or not even um, there's not always an awareness of it unless you're on a really spiritually um, awakened path. But again, you know, this is a collective new moon. So, you know, it is my feeling that we are going to start to be um, introduced to a more spiritual way of looking at things and more spiritual understanding through the moon in Gemini. Um, but, you know, we have to see the value in that. We have to see the importance and the benefit of that. And that is what is going to start coming through. And um, so seeing things from a higher perspective, perhaps from a more unified perspective, because Pisces is very much about unity. It's about also stepping into that void energy where we actually have to let go of all the sort of um, 3D mundane, you know, trivial stuff and um, have a much sort of bigger picture it's almost surrendering as well in many ways um it's going to bring through a new level of compassion um but also you know these are lessons and we have to um you know there is a sense that we have to get them we have to um we have to take them and we have to pass them. <laughs> and so, you know, it's a case of, you know, ready or not, it is time to just get on and, um, yeah, just get, get on and do the work here. So it is, a square is non-negotiable. Like I said, you can't ignore it. And if you do, it's just going to come back louder each time, which I find that the universe is very good at delivering lessons in that way if you're not sitting up and paying attention. So, you know, really... Um, Again, and it doesn't have to be hard work, but like I said, it is non-negotiable. So there is this kind of real, you know, we need to really start to see things from a much sort of higher perspective. And the cosmic and galactic energies are really supporting us to do that. And I will talk about those in a minute. But we also have um, the sun, moon and Venus are trine the south node and also Lilith. So 
the south node being um, in Libra in what we are letting go of, that we have outgrown, that is no longer serving our greatest good, that is not promoting growth, not pushing us forward. And in Libra, you know, this includes anything that has perhaps been unjust, that has been um, sort of affecting our harmony and our balance and our peace within us and collectively outside in our external worlds. Um, relation, um, Libra is all about relationships, so where we might have had codependent relationships that are just no longer in resonance, they're, no, they're not healthy for us, they're not good for us, and um, so this is about letting go, and of course Lilith is again a very feminine energy, um, but she represents where we have perhaps got shadow that we need to work with, anything that we have been ashamed of, anything that we have repressed, um, where we have felt rejected, um, where we have felt scorned, ostracised. You know, Lilith is here to really, um, you know, take that war cry and be heard. But with this conjunction, it is about, you know, where has there been injustice, perhaps, um, you know, that or suppression or repression or, you know, where you know, the divine feminine has been um, attacked or held down or hidden away or, you know, not been allowed to be seen or given a voice. Again, you know, this trine is very much supporting the letting go of anything that sort of falls into these um, areas. We also have Mars is conjunct Eris. So these are two very feisty, feisty, fighty energies. So Mars, the god of war, Eris is the female god of war. Eris wants to shout out and stand up for anybody who has been marginalised or mistreated or, um, you know, again, it's quite similar energy in, in some ways to Lilith, but there's certainly a real sort of, you know, it's time to speak up. It's time to stand up for anything, anyone, any situation where there has been injustice or there has been you know, something um, has been hidden away or sat upon or um, stifled or disempowered. That, yeah, disempowered. You know, it is time for all this to come to light. So, um, yeah, and Chiron is also sitting very closely to Mars and Eris. So, again, this is bringing deep healing. Whatever is being sort of um, brought to light at this time where, you know, people are having the courage through Mars to stand up, to be counted, to, you know, speak their truth. Again, it is going to be very healing. And we have Pluto in a trine to Jupiter. So both planets being incredibly powerful. Jupiter is expanding, wants us to grow, wants us to make the most of the opportunity in Gemini, you know, through the information that's coming through. Whereas Pluto is really helping to uncover anything that has been hidden, to bring things to the surface so that we can evolve, so that we can transform. Um, you know, and again, this is for the collective because Pluto is still in Aquarius. So, you know, this is really powerful um, energy. And of course, we have the galactic points being activated too. And I will come on to those now. And there's some really, really powerful galactic energy and fixed stars in this chart. Um, we have got the biggest one is a star in the Orion constellation. Now, the Orion constellation is one of the most familiar Orion's belt being those three stars um, across the skies. But it is the star in the right hand or that well depending which way you look at it if you're looking at it on the right side the hunter's foot that we are working with at this new moon and that is a star called Rigel or Rigel and you know this star is very much linked to information to understanding to the mind and um, Rigel is a blue super giant very very powerful very linked to strategy, to intelligence, to information, um, information that is going to be really influential and it brings the ability to sort of stand up and lead and be counted for and respected for the information that you have. Um, it's, you know, brings a real sense of purpose, a real sense of drive for success, for success and achievement. And um, there's also strong teaching ability whenever Rigel or Rigel is strong in the chart. And that is sort of the more positive expressions. But there is 
as with everything in this world, there is a lower expression with Rigel, particularly when it's in a slightly more challenging aspect. Now, in this chart, it's not. It's in a very powerful position. The sun is shining its light here, really empowering and enlightening this star and the role it has to play in this new moon. But there is also a link with Rigel to... Um, situations where information or the mind or the understanding is used to manipulate to control and to disempower people and whenever i see it particularly in a square depending on which, which planet it is squaring um in this case obviously it's in a square to saturn you know there can be um a real sense of a dark agenda or something, um, you know, behavior or um, situations which are nefarious. And in this case with Saturn, it is about, you know, we have got some lessons here to learn if we're able to see it from a higher perspective, you know, with the help of, you know, perhaps our higher selves or other beings that can help sort of bring light to a situation. We have this opportunity to really see where we may have been subject to manipulation or misinformation or mind control brainwashing and um, you know there's all sorts of ways that information can be used you know f where it's not empowering where stories might have been told or believed that you know aren't actually true or aren't from a place of integrity so Rigel you know being that sort of at the archer's foot the front foot taking a step forward really helps us to push through the confusion and to have clarity and again, you know, this is really important here, an acknowledgement that there's lots of different threads, lots of different sides, lots of different opinions coming through stories. You know, we've obviously got the rise of AI. It's very difficult often to know what is true and what is not. And, you know, people do have agendas. You know, there is propaganda in our world. So it is about having the ability to have this new understanding and to push through the confusion with the help of Rigel to really sort out, um, you know, what is true and what is not and what is true for you. Because obviously everybody has a different viewpoint, a different perspective and a different version of their own truth. And we're not trying to get everyone to think the same way or have the same views. It is about being able to navigate them and find your way through through. And there's also this sense, um, you know, with this um, conjunction with Regal that, you know, there may be new teachers coming through or new leaders that have new information that we can align with more strongly that is for our greater good, that is for our expansion and our growth. And we may actually find that we are our own educators, that we can be our own teachers and our own leaders. So again, you know, there's lots of different ways of looking at this energy because it even more so because it's Gemini. But we have, um, there is a point called the Great Attractor that is the probably the third most powerful cosmic point in galactic astrology. And that lies at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. So that is opposing the Sun, the Moon and Venus. And the Great Attractor acts very much like a black hole, silly really strong magnetic energy. It's got a huge gravitational pull and it is working with us um, in a number of ways. It, in a way, it sends out streams of consciousness and understanding and truth. And because this is an opposition, it's almost like um, it is trying to pull away anything that is not true and any sort of old um, mindsets, mind um, patterns, belief systems that are outdated and no longer serving us. So that's going, the great attractor is going to strip that away, but it is also sending out new information. And, you know, depending on what sort of um, where you are um, energetically, you know, some of us are more, a, more able to hear it and receive it than others not that there is any judgment there it just depends what frequency you're vibrating at but again you know because this is um affecting a new moon it's almost like something is being unlocked and there may be more potential for um the wider 
um, sort of populace to start being able to tune into this information. But the Great Attractor really stretches us beyond, out of our comfort zone, out of what it is that we think we know and brings in new sort of levels of understanding, new realities as well can come in through the Great Attractor. So this is really powerful energy to be activating this new moon. It will help us to be able to see round corners because the great attractor can bend time, it can bend light. So this ability to see behind the veil, behind the curtain potentially, um, and just have this kind of real sense of just knowing that perhaps has always been there, but suddenly just becomes blindingly obvious. It's like you can see it, it has been in plain sight all along, but it's just been out of your periphery perhaps. But suddenly, you know, this energy is giving us a new perspective and a new understanding and a new ability to see things for what they are and how they are with complete authenticity. You know, everything that is untrue is being stripped back and pulled away. So, you know, it is like we can see everything with this great attractor energy. So that's going to be really interesting to see how that sort of plays out in amongst everything else that is going on. And um, we have Mercury is conjunct stars in the Hades constellation. The Hades being the star of illumination. So Mercury being in our mind and our understanding and our communication, Mercury the messenger. So again, the Hades stars are very much about creativity um, being space holder, transmuting um, lower densities and frequencies, um, but also very much linked to serenity, to tranquility, to stillness, to a state of being rather than doing. So amidst, amidst, amidst all this sort of busyness, all this noise, all this action, um, you know, there is this chance to perhaps, you know, find that point of stillness. You know, sometimes when there is just so much noise, so much um, sort of coming at you, it's almost like, you know, we have to be pushed far enough for something to give and for us to actually say, no, that's it, I'm not listening anymore. And I just go into that state of stillness because often it's when you quieten the mind and stop listening to all those outside influences, all that noise, all those opinions, um, that you know you are able to get that clarity that comes through from your higher self and that is your own truth and that is where really ultimately we need to be heading for and that's what we need to be trying to achieve if possible so the Hades energy is really going to help us with that and again you know the star of illumination is like wow you know suddenly we can see something in a completely new light with a completely fresh eyes and a new perspective and new understanding. And, you know, the potential that that has, that has to change everything in a heartbeat even. So really beautiful energy there. We also have um, Mars is particularly active with lots of trines in this chart. So Mars is trying the galactic center which of course is another one of the cosmic points, which is bringing sort of higher consciousness, cosmic wisdom, um, higher intelligence through, activating a more galactic information and understanding and taking us higher, but really, um, you know, giving us the impetus and the motivation to want to go higher, to want to have this higher understanding. It's also trying Alphard in the Hydra constellation. So, you know, this is very much linked to Kundalini energy, to regeneration, to the serpent, to the snake, to shedding layers. Again, very feminine energy. Um, Alphard also being the gatekeeper. So there's a strong theme of protection here. Um, and sort of knowing what it is that we need to let go of if we are to be reborn. So that is really beautiful with the trine. Again, it's very harmonious. There's a beautiful flow there. Um, also trine Etamin in the Theban constellation. So we've got some beautiful dragon energy there. Also, again, themes of transmuting um, you know, through the fire. 
energy um yeah transmuting and um sort of burning down what is no longer needed and required so that something can be born from the ashes also very strong themes of protection and um, foresight and being able to see the bigger picture having strength sovereignty all those beautiful qualities and then regulus which is linked to um the one of the four royal stars so regulus is the star that is linked to Archangel Raphael. So beautiful archan archangelic energy here, very much linked to healing, to stepping into the heart consciousness, which again is coming through with Venus in such a powerful position. You know, so it really is much about being able to embrace the qualities and themes of freedom and not being so fixed and attached to a certain way of being, understanding, you know, that things have to change, that have to shift and have to evolve in order that we can transform, you know, nothing ever stays the same. So, you know, some really beautiful energy coming through Mars. And then we still have Uranus in opposition to Hadar and Beta Centauri. Um, I've talked about that in previous videos, but this is, you know, about an energy of unconditional love, of compassion, of unity, of collaboration, of a connection to nature, sort of a love for all living beings coming through very strongly there and helping us to really wake up to, you know, the understanding and the um the idea that this actually could become a reality if we want to bring that in and if we really want to work with that and make that part of our reality. Jupiter is in a trine to Pluto, as we've already said, but also the supergalactic centre. So the supergalactic centre, you know, creating this grand trine in our skies, encouraging us to stretch our minds and our understanding to want to know more, to want to be more. And also almost taking us outside of ourselves and outside of our sort of day to day reality and what we have known and lived with up until now. It's like, you know, this huge potential coming through. Altair conjunct Pluto, the Aquila constellation, you know, the eagle energy, seeing the bigger picture, having the courage to actually make the change and to sort of step through that transformation doorway. You know, there is so much going on. And the other um, thing that I just wanted to bring in, and again, this was quite active at the last full moon we had, but we have the asteroid Hawaii, which um, represents Lemuria in the chart. And that is at seven degrees of Gemini. So again, more Gemini energy, information coming through potentially about Lemuria, and it is in a conjunction to Mercury. So again, it's like understanding, new levels of understanding, new wisdom coming up that relates to past civilizations on Earth where we did live in much more um, alignment with and connection to the Earth, to one another. We had 5D consciousness, much more heart-centered, much more open, much more feminine way of being and living. So again, you know, it's just sort of bringing up these memories and the potential of what could be to remind us you know that although we're not going to go back to what it was like then there are themes and there are traits and there are values that we can absolutely connect to and bring through to create what it is that we want to sort of see and experience in our new earth in our new way so i'm going to leave that there i feel as always there's been quite a lot of information but thank you if you've got to the end of this video thank you for sort of you know sitting with me and staying with me and i'm sure there's probably a lot that i haven't said because i always think of things afterwards but um, I have to trust that what has come through is, you know, the most important at this time. So thank you so much for being here. Um, if you haven't already, please do like um, the video and subscribe if you have not already done so. I have a monthly newsletter that I send out. So if you want to join my mailing list for that, you can do so by visiting my website, which is spiralbright.co.uk. Um, and yeah, please, you know, share any comments. If you've got strong Gemini in your chart, you're going to be feeling this um, quite intensely. Um, so yeah, let me know how it's sort of working out for you and if you resonate with what has come through. So thank you again and I will see you soon.